math. It's a wonderful thing. It's absolutely incredible. Many people use a calculator for it, but you know what you can't do with a calculator? You can't round off your answers. Why would you want to round off your answers? It's all about truth. It's all about honesty. That's right. It's the American way. You see, the answer to your problem cannot be any better than the numbers that went into doing that math problem. That's right. The chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Today, I'm going to show you how to round off answers to addition and subtraction problems, and then I'm going to show you how to round off answers to multiplication and division problems. There's different methods for both. Let's get started right now. There, that was easy, wasn't it? Doesn't really take much more than just a calculator and a finger, but that doesn't help us with our issue. How do we round off the answers to these problems? Here's how you do it. When you add or subtract, you take a look at the numbers you're adding and subtracting. Your answer can't go out any further than the place to which the least precise of your numbers goes out. Here's what I mean. This number goes to the tenths place. This number goes to the tenths place, which means you need to round to the nearest tenth. Well, since the answer is already to the nearest tenth, rounding really isn't necessary. So our final answer is 35.7 centimeters. Again, don't forget to put units in even when you're doing math problems. For this next one, this number goes out to the thousandths place, where this number only goes out to the tenths place. Which one's least precise? The one that goes the least far out, the tenths place. So we're going to round 43.323, the nearest tenth. Now to do that, we look in the place just after the one we're going to round to. If this place is four or less, then we leave this place alone. If this is five or more, then we bump that up by one. Well, there's a two over here. That doesn't get bumped up. 43.3 milliliters. For this next one, this number here is bigger than one. There's no line over a zero. There's no decimal point, which means it only goes to the hundreds place. It barely goes out at all. This goes to the ones place. Which one goes out least far? That one goes out the fewest places toward the right. So we have to round to the nearest hundred. And 843 to the nearest hundred is 800. And that would be in grams. For this next one, this line over zero means that this measurement was made to the nearest tens place. This measurement was made to the nearest tenths place. Which one goes least far out? Whichever place is least to the right the tens place. So we have to end our answer off to the nearest 10. How do we do that? Well, it's 900, but to show that that is going to be the limit of our precision, we put a line over that zero there, and that gives us grams. Feel free to play that part back as often as you want until you get it. I know it may seem a little bit confusing, but you will get it. For this next one, 100 with a decimal point, the decimal point means it goes to the ones place. This goes to the tenths place. Which one goes least far out? Ones place. We round 76.3 to the nearest one, which is 76, and our unit is milliliters. For this last one, this measurement goes to the tenths place. This measurement goes to the thousands place. We round our answer off to the nearest thousand, two thousand, and the units are grams. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, what would be the point of adding the numbers at all? Imagine, if you will, you have a scale that measures the nearest thousand grams. And then on, you, you put a two thousand gram weight on it. Then to it, you add something that weighs 17.9 grams. Well, the scale can only measure to the thousands place. It's not sensitive enough to measure anything that's less massive than that. So adding 17.9 grams would be like weighing yourself on your scale at home and having a fly land on your head. It's not all of a sudden going to make your scale go, oh my gosh, you're so much heavier. You see what I mean? This is an insignificant mass when compared to how bad the precision of that measuring device is. You are rarely going to run into a situation in lab where you're going to need to use this. Because if you're going to be measuring things in lab with the same unit, chances are you're going to be using exactly the same measuring device. And if you use the same measuring device, you're going to be taking it out to the same place every time. So in lab, this is rarely going to be an issue. 
All right, let's do multiplication and division now. Because you don't multiply and divide using the same technique that you add and subtract, you're going to use a different method to round off your answer. Now again, we got some problems here. Well, it'll be easy enough to solve. Again, just take out our calculator and plug in the numbers and see what we get. Again, that was really easy because all we really needed is a calculator and a finger. Now, how do we round these answers off? Simple enough. When you add it or subtract it, you round to whichever place went out the least far. When you, add, when you multiply or divide, you're going to round to the number of significant figures that the measurement with the fewest number of significant figures has. This number here has three significant figures. Bigger than one with a decimal point, they're all sig figs. Bigger than one with a decimal point, they're all sig figs. So we have three sig figs in this measurement. We have two sig figs in this measurement, which means we need to have two sig figs, the, the smaller amount, in our final answer. We count in from the leftward side two significant figures. And whatever that place is, that's the place you're going to round to. So 193 rounded to two significant figures is going to be 190 centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared. For this next one, bigger than one with a decimal point, there are three sig figs. Bigger than one with a decimal point, there's five sig figs. Again, we round to the one that has the fewest sig figs, three sig figs. So we count in from the leftward side three significant figures. One, two, three. This number is not a sig fig. In fact, a lot of times when you write these numbers, sometimes you just leave the zero out, right? And just like put 0.13, blah, blah, blah. All right. This four is not enough to bump that two up, so your rounded answer is 0.132 grams per milliliter. Grams divided by milliliters is grams per milliliter. For the next one, you'll notice that we have three problems that look pretty much identical. Three sig figs for these guys, but notice that we have an increasing number of significant figures for our value of 20. This only has one sig fig. This has two sig figs. This has three sig figs. This shows you the importance of measuring as precise as you can. The more numbers you have in your measurement, the more precise your final answer is going to end up being. Here's what I mean. One sig fig. We need to round to that place. This 5 bumps it up to a 2. And then we need to pop in place holding zeros here. Because you can't very well round off 15,260 to just 2. You have to keep the same order of magnitude for your number. And that would be in centimeters squared. All right, but we only have one sig fig to work with here. That's really not a lot. Here we add an extra sig fig, which means our final answer is going to be a bit more precise. 15,000. And for this last one, we have three sig figs, which means our final answer can be even that much more precise. 15,300, because this six pops that two up to a three, and we make these two placeholding zeros. And that is how you add and subtract and multiply and divide and do the rounding for both. So to summarize this process, when you add or subtract measurements, you're going to round your answer to whichever place the measurement that went out the least far went. Thousands place, tenths place, round your answer to the tenths place. And with multiplication and division, you're going to round your answer off to the number of significant figures that the measurement with the fewest number of significant figures had that went into doing the calculation. Three significant figures, two significant figures. We round our answer off two significant figures in from the left side, and that is the number of significant figures in our final answer. Now that you can round off answers, you'll never have to ask again, what place do I round off to? Because now you'll know how to do it for yourself. You have just been given a mathematical superpower. Enjoy it.